Hello there, my fellow gamers. With the original Steam Deck, Valve basically reintroduced gaming handhelds back into the mainstream. And apparently they did so with success, since almost every major manufacturer launched their own version of a super mobile gaming console. And we even got some new players from overseas battling over your hard-earned cash for your on-the-go or couch gaming needs. Today we have five very different handhelds in the studio, and while they share the same core formula, each one has its unique quirks and features that will make for an interesting comparison. As the ultimate OG, we got the Steam Deck in its upgraded OLED variant. Valve's take on the mobile console was not only the first to the market, sparking the whole trend, but it's also unique in our comparison today, since it's the only contender running on a Linux-based operating system. In addition to 16GB of RAM and up to 1TB of storage, a custom APU is tasked with bringing fresh frames to the 7.4-inch 720p OLED running at up to 90Hz. ASUS, on the other hand, was one of the first big players in the industry to follow with their Ally, which has a very similar form factor to the Steam Deck, but a much more flashy design. It has a gorgeous 1080p 7-inch 120Hz panel fueled by AMD's C1 Extreme and 780M, 16GB of RAM and 512GB of storage. The AI Nayokun is the most exotic of the bunch and can almost be described as the boutique option with a pretty insane RAM and storage config, a massive 8.4-inch QHD panel and a full-fledged laptop CPU, which it shares with the One X Player Pro 2. The flashy white handheld, on the other hand, has a few aces up its sleeves as well and comes with detachable controllers, a magnetic keyboard and a similar screen. Last but not least, we have the Lenovo Legion Go, which shares its core components with the RG Ally, the larger screen size with the AI Neo and the One X Player, albeit at a much higher refresh rate, and it also features detachable controllers, one of which can function as a mouse. Well, sort of. And if that isn't special enough for you, you can even buy classes for it. Again, sort of. With all of the technical details out of the way, let's examine one of the most important aspects of a handheld, ergonomics. Right off the bat, Valve nailed it with the Steam Deck's combination of relatively low weight and deep grips. You can easily game for hours on end without straining your hands and especially your wrists. The Ally is a bit of an odd one in this regard. While it's the slimmest and lightest of the bunch, it also feels flat. While everything is easy to reach for longer gaming sessions, I would personally wish for a bit more heft to hold the small gaming console. The Legion Go and One X Player are tied, in my opinion, with a very creepy feel, even though it feels like you're always pushing buttons on the go, since there are simply so many of them. The One X Player feels great in your hands. I just wish the connection between the main body and the controller parts had been a bit more sturdy. It's not like you have to worry about it falling apart. There is just a little too much flex, in my opinion. That said, the mechanism for releasing the controllers works much better than on the Legion. And with the included connector, you have a very functional, if very large, controller at your disposal in just a few seconds. It comes with its own USB dongle, and I tried it with the tablet portion connected to my TV while playing games via GeForce Now on my 4K TV. Which actually makes for a stellar gaming experience if you have the necessary internet connection. Freeing the go of its controllers or reattaching them is a bit more finicky, since you never quite know when they are locked in place properly. And I always hit the power button when securing the right one in place. But that might also just be me. But you can use the two individual controller parts right away as soon as they are disconnected, which works very well, even though I still wish Lenovo would offer a way to combine both for a proper full-fledged controller experience. The FPS mode is also quite interesting. It does work without a problem, but there is definitely a learning curve to it. If you consider the additional space you need, you might as well just opt for a gaming laptop, but it's there. It doesn't sacrifice anything else when it comes to the user experience, so I mean, why not? You just have to be aware that you have to do quite a bit of tweaking to assign all the needed buttons in your games before you can start shooting away. And then there's the AI Neo Kuhn. Its smooth plastic housing feels very premium and well-made, but it's also the heaviest of our contenders by quite a significant margin, which can get quite uncomfortable after a little while. But it does come with a little stand to prop it up on your desk for added support, even though the stand itself feels a little flimsy. Both the One X Player and the Legion Go share this idea, though the Go has the best implementation since the stand covers the whole backside of the handheld. When it comes to the actual quality of inputs, we have only good news here for basically all of them, and which one you will prefer will most likely just come down to your personal preference. 
The weakest among them might be the One X player though. While all the buttons and triggers work very well functionally, the feel, especially compared to the very good competition, left us a little wanting. And it's the only one without dedicated buttons on the back. The rest of the bunch are tied, in my opinion, with precise, well-placed inputs that should make your hands feel at home after just a few minutes. As a little bit of a bonus, the Steam Deck, AI Neo and the Legion Go feature small touchpads that can function as a mouse replacement. It's especially handy for the Windows variants, since with certain apps touch or controller inputs can be a little bit finicky and while I would not use it for shooters or anything, it's a very handy additional input option for things like strategy games or the like. In terms of connections, the three larger devices are the clear winners, with the Steam Deck only offering a single USB-C, a micro SD card reader and a headphone jack. The Ally pretty much shares this layout but adds the proprietary XG Mobile connector for ASUS's external GPU. This connector lets you add up to an RTX 4090 to your handheld, turning it into a 4K capable gaming monster. The Legion Go features two USB-C 4 ports and a card reader once more, while both the ANEO and One X player add a USB-A into the mix, which I personally really appreciate to add a headset or a hard drive to your setup quickly. In regards to their card readers, all of the Windows-based handhelds perform very admirably, while the Steam Deck lags quite a bit behind and also performs less than stellar in our Wi-Fi tests alongside the ANU. Meanwhile, the Ally, One X Player and Legion go head-to-head -head battling for the fastest game downloads. Chances are you might take these puppies on the road, and both the Steam Deck and Legion Go have included cases that keep your precious handhelds protected. For the Ally, ROG offers a sleeve that you have to purchase separately, while you have to come up with your own solution of safe transport for the ANU and One X player. When it comes to maintenance, the Steam Deck and the Ally have the edge since for the others this assembly is quite a chore without any real benefits. Both the Legion Go and ANEO theoretically give you access to their SSDs, but getting to them is quite a journey that most of you will probably not want to go through. We have been able to remove the back cover of the One X player, but once again doing anything in there apart from cleaning the fans is almost impossible. In stark contrast, it is very easy to get inside the ROG, and with ASUS offering a whole host of spare parts, repairs or upgrades can easily be done at home if you so desire. The Steam Deck takes it to another level though, with a massive ecosystem of third-party upgrades and customization options you can easily make it your own, be it with new joysticks or even cosmetic backplates. Alright folks, let's talk screens. Once again, both the Ally and the Steam Deck are able to send out with the 120Hz refresh rate and FreeSync being the selling point for the RG and the OLED for Valve's option. The larger devices share their massive QHD panels for a very crisp appearance, but only the Go features a higher refresh rate, unfortunately without any form of VRR support. When it comes to our measurements though, the larger variants have the edge when it comes to color gamut coverage, next to the Steam Deck's OLED. With the ANEO being the brightest of the bunch, while the One X player falls a little behind when it comes to peak brightness, but pretty respectable contrast results in return. So while games will look good on all of them, you have to be aware that the AI Neo, One X Player and Legion Go use vertical tablet displays, which might lead to vertical tearing. The Go can somehow offset this with its faster refresh rate, but VSync will still be your best friend for tear-free games, which shows once again the tremendous benefit of FreeSync in the Ally. Response times are outstanding for the Steam Deck, very good for the Ally, alright for both the Legion and AI Neo, and a little slow for the One X Player. But given that you will hardly play super fast shooters on any of these handhelds, it's not a deal breaker in my opinion. Just like the Ally, the Player Pro 2 makes do without PWM to regulate brightness though, while you might want to watch out for the Go, ANU and Steam Deck if you are sensitive towards flickering panels. When it comes to the software, things have improved tremendously over the past few months on the Windows side of things, while the Steam Deck was pretty good from the get-go with its tailor-made OS. The Ally and Legion Go both come with their separate launchers and an easy to navigate control overlay that should have you covered for almost anything you need on a daily basis. The AI Neo knocks it out of the park with some pretty crazy customization options and while the One X player also lets you control everything with an overlay, it's a little more basic than the rest, but still works very well in without any hiccups. 
So how about performance? Well, there's actually a lot you can do to tweak each and every one of these to your heart's content with a whole host of power profiles, individual wattage settings and so on and so on. And while CPU performance is not the most deciding factor for this class of devices, we still used a Cinebench R23 run at the highest performance setting to establish a sort of baseline. If you really want to dive into the nitty gritty details, please head on over to our individual written reviews on the website. We have a ton of additional benchmark results for all of them. In a nutshell, the Windows-based competitors perform on a similar level, which should be a given since they share the same CPU architecture for the most part, while the Steam Deck lags behind significantly, which also shouldn't be a surprise given its weaker APU on paper. System performance is very snappy for all of them subjectively and while the Steam Deck has the benefit of a much more streamlined OS, even our Windows competitors can easily keep up even with much more productivity focused work, should you want to use these in workflows beyond just gaming. While all of them feature fast NVMe SSDs, the ANEO and Legion have to throttle their drive significantly in our torture tests. But that should hardly be a cause of concern in everyday use case scenarios. But of course these are primarily gaming devices, so let's see how well they all do in this regard. As a little bit of a disclaimer, while most of our benchmark tests are standardized, the OS of the Steam Deck presented us with some challenges when locking our results. So instead of our usual performance rating, I will rather focus on individual games to put all of them in perspective with one another. We will stick mostly to Full HD as a middle ground when it comes to resolution and you should also keep in mind that you can easily optimize gaming performance when playing around with the settings and things like FSR for example. As you can see, the ANEU benefits across the board from its high power levels, followed closely by the Ally. But in the end, all of them offer a similar gaming experience from a performance perspective. The Steam Deck performs actually quite admirably as well, even in its non-native resolution, and it offers pretty much the same numbers than the rest of our competitors in its native resolution, so it seems like the hardware inside of our OG is perfectly selected for its display. Again, if you are after more details for more games and different quality settings, please head on over to our written reviews, linked in the description below. For the Ally, for example, we even have additional benchmarks in combination with the external 4090 if you are after that sort of thing. When it comes to noise and temperatures, the ANEU has to yield to its higher power levels and you might want to play around with the power settings if you want to play without headphones with the loudest fans under full load. Apart from that, all of our options today perform on a similar level during our testing and to give you a more subjective impression, I recorded some noise samples for you. Let me know in the comments below which one does best in your opinion. Despite their mobile nature, battery life, especially while gaming, is a bit of a letdown for all of them except the Steam Deck. When playing with your free, Valve's handheld can last for more than 4 hours, while our other contenders hover between the 1 to 1.5 one hours mark, with the Ally not even managing a full 60 minutes. So if stamina is your main goal, you might really want to get acquainted with the software settings for all of them to find the perfect wattage to performance setting for each individual game, to play as long as possible away from the wall. Or just get a steam deck. In lighter loads, all of our contenders perform a lot better except for the Legion Go, with not even 6 hours in our simulated Wi-Fi web surfing test. Alright folks, let's wrap this up for today. So which of the handhelds we have looked at today should be your overall pick? Well, as always, it's complicated. If you are after the best gaming experience without spending a fortune, the Ally and the Steam Deck are very tough to beat. 
Personally, I would have a very hard time to decide between these two. But I would probably lean more towards the Ally because of its faster screen with FreeSync support and I also play a lot of games via different stores and GeForce Now. So the Steam Deck OS would be a little too restricting for me personally. But I would definitely be very jealous of the OLED. And what about our bigger contenders? Well, to be quite honest, I really, really like the Legion Go. While the Steam Deck and the Ally are really good gaming devices, they are just dead. Whereas the Legion can also be a tablet and generally just offers that much more usability for a wider range of use cases. And it's quite reasonably priced for what it offers. The One X player is in a bit of a tough spot with its pricing, even though it is a very good option as well. And the ANEO is simply stupid, if awesome, in our review configuration. And even in a much more sensible config, it's the most expensive of the bunch. But please guys, let me know what you think. Which one would be your personal favorite and would you even consider a handheld? Let's talk about it in the comments below. That should be it for today. Thanks a ton for watching. Please leave a like and sub on your way out. My name is Alex, you have been absolutely amazing and I cannot wait to see you all in the next one. Take care.